Hello friends and welcome to a mini midweek Kings of Anglia podcast. I'm your host Mark Heath. This show of course is brought to you in association with manscaped.com. Use the code KOA for 20% off everything and free delivery at manscaped.com. I'm joined this week on this mini pod by a fellow Manscaped enthusiast. Um, the other few kings are not around. Stu's off. Ross is off. The big porker is covering Speedway tonight. So it's a mini pod with just me and thee, the Hutch Man, Hutch Hogan, Hutchzilla, Andy Warren. How are you, my friend? There's definitely another one of those nicknames that got introduced recently, and I've completely forgotten what it was, but I quite liked it. So oh, blip, if any. Blip. Oh, um, Scandy Warren wasn't it from our friend uh, uh, no no not that one it was it was a it was something that trumped Ad- Adolf Hutchler <laughs> I can't remember what it was anyway was, if anyone remembers let us know wasn't blue tick bad man was it no it was another another <laughs> adaptation on on Hutch mm. um friend before we get going for those of you watching on video you can see over over Hutchie's right shoulder and only is the rack of of uh, a town clobber still there there seems to be a new shirt on the wall Hutchie is that John McGreal frame shirt you've got on the wall there that's Pride new, and, isn't it? Pride and joy, that is. Um, I caught that in the crowd 20 years ago. Um, on, it, the big, like, on the big day? Uh, the, no, no. not Well, no. The, the, the final day of the season, they finished fifth. Nice. Um, I caught that in the front row of the crowd and wrestled it off a bald man. Um, <laughs> we tried to steal it from a 13-year-old boy. So, um, oh, that's appalling. Shame. Shame on him. The rest of the crowd let him know what they uh, what they thought of that. In- is- interestingly, we got back to the car park and he was parked next to us. Very awkward. Oh, uh, very awkward. But um, yeah, it's just been reframed. And if you can see there, that yeah. shirt, that that Darren big O'Day. name, yeah, yeah, that currently available on eBay. If anyone, oh, okay, is, in- is interested. <laughs> um, is, it, is it a match worn shirt? It's a match prepared shirt. Whether ah, it was okay. worn or not, I do not know. Um, was it? But, but yeah. How about how about McGrill's shirt? Did you wash it? Is it? Um, is it... Don't think so. Don't it's had to so. be. It's had to be reframed because it. Um, the the previous one got got bleached in the sun. I left it in the wrong place mm. in a in a previous flat. So uh, yeah. So but in it's theory, now, but it's now the, up. In theory, from that shirt, we could we could take McGrill's DNA and maybe clone him in a Jurassic Park style. I mean, maybe that's that's the future of, of football. <laughs> Instead of signing players, just create your own from from former greats. It's like fantasy football on on drugs. Yeah, like literally, like serious fantasy football. You could just... do you could do some serious experiments there as well, couldn't you? Kind of <laughs> you know, from several and producing like a super a super player uh, with, the, with the qualities of, of many. Uh, yeah, like, like fusing Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo together to have a su- a super player. To be fair. A little clone of of John McGreal wouldn't go amiss for Ipswich at the moment. Not an unheralded member of that of that team, but would be probably the best player on the pitch <laughs> in the current one. So, exactly, and that's a lovely little segue, Hutchie, into talking about Tuesday night. Now, clearly, this is not starting how we hoped. Um, they lost at Cheltenham two one on Tuesday night. They they took the lead. Uh, everything looked rosy. Then McCauley Bond produced. What we've all described independently as an extraordinary miss, because it really was. There's no other word for it. Um, and then obviously they ended up conceding two from long throw chaos and they lost again. So one point from three games, 19th in the table for reasons previously discussed. Do not panic. It will come good. Um, but Hutchie, that was that was not what we hoped for, was it, on, on Tuesday night? No. <laughs> uh, and, and once they took the lead uh, through a, a really good Matt Penny Matt Penny strike there. Um, so much power on that and mm. swerve and moved in the air and the keeper couldn't couldn't track it. Um, I'll be honest, once that goal went in, um, I was convinced they'd go on and win it. Um, yes, we knew that Cheltenham's long throws would cause trouble, but but in the first half, barring a couple of moments where Hladke didn't didn't really cover himself in glory in defending those. Ipswich were really comfortable. They were the better side. They were using the ball well. Piggott and Bon um, were linking up as a as a pairing up up top. Kyle Edwards was was fantastic. Almost every touch of his was was positive and and threatening. And I, I felt extremely confident that that team would go on and win from one nil up. And I felt even more confident when Macaulay Bon lifted the ball over the goalkeeper. <laughs> and um, yeah. And was just gonna just gonna put it into the empty net, wasn't he? But he um he didn't. 
and from there, um, the wheels fell off a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we'll come on to your million pound picks in due course. But had that, had you had the option, if 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 the live was paused as Bond approached the, the empty net, there, you'd have gone all in, wouldn't you? You said, right, seven hundred grand, Macaulay Bond scores this, and of course, he didn't. And then and then things went downhill, Hutchie. What what went wrong for you? I mean, obviously, the, the long throws were, were causing yeah. chaos. <clears throat> yeah, with, with with the Bond miss, yeah, it was a. It was a bad miss. He knows it was a bad miss. Um, there, there. He was receiving treatment just before it. I, th- I don't know if he dislocated his finger or something, but he was getting no. some like real treatment from the from the coaching stuff, the, the training staff, kind of in the seconds prior to that happening. But he just he just kind of like ran ahead of the ball a little bit. He he, he lifted it over well enough, maybe maybe a little pacey ran ahead of the ball and there was an opportunity there just to nod it in, but he, he's kind of got lost a little bit underneath it and then had two air kicks mm. to try and, to try and turn it home. So um, if that had gone in, surely, surely it would have been game over, but se- second half, they seemed maybe a little comfortable to just kind of keep that goal lead intact. We all predicted one nil wins, didn't we? So maybe they were just trying to um, see those home for us with a, with a more just a, a more controlled, measured second half, but they just got rattled a little bit by those mm-hmm. by those long throws. The first one obviously wasn't <clears> direct <throat> from it. it. It the ball came back into the box, and it's a really good a really good header into the top corner there. But Penny Matt Penny's kind of been pinned between two men and and didn't deal with with either of them there. And then the second one, I think it's Macaulay Bon again who who didn't deal with the didn't deal with the ball when it flung into the box and there's a loose ball in there and and it's just been turned home and um didn't really have it didn't really have a shout of getting the equalizer f- from that point on it's, it just rattled i thought by mm. by things um things going wrong and that's that's an issue aside from all the all the changes that we've seen that's an issue that has been a problem at town for a while hasn't it this kind of um, ability to be easily rattled by things turning against them it was a constant issue last season and even with all these new players this season there were signs of that again that kind of trait is still there yeah yeah it's um you know it's not a great trait to have in football is it you are you are going to concede goals and you are going to need to respond to that um clearly clearly it's a different group of players clearly there are different reasons for it but um yeah, without kind of bringing up the, the kind of heavy-ish conversation we had on on Mondays, one of these where we were talking about kind of the state of things and, and how much to read into what's going on so far. It's another game that you would think that Ipswich would would be going in at least getting a point from. Um, they've obviously played Morecambe, Burton, and and now Cheltenham in the league, and to take just one point from those three games is really, really disappointing. Um, mm. I think, I think actually uh, there was the headline that you used on, on Ross's, Ross's game day video. Was that from Mark, from Mark Beck um, it, to say disappointing, but understandable. Um, yeah. Not acceptable, th- not acceptable, but understandable. Was yeah. Quite. Yeah. I think that's, um, that's a pretty perfect way of kind of summing up where Ipswich are at at the moment no it's not acceptable to be taking one point from from Morecambe uh, Burton and Cheltenham but it is it is understandable but it can't go on forever Mm. just a shout out to those two Mark and Mike who are uh, fast becoming a a comedy duo akin to Morecambe and Wise I I see them very much as like angel and and devil on your shoulder because Mark is is kind of trying to be positive and Mike is very much well that's a joke absolute joke that kind of thing Um, so it's really good dynamic between the two look out for more of them on on the game day videos this season and thanks guys for for getting involved because you are excellent at it as is everyone else we speak to Um, Hutchie, what did you make of the the lineup? We discussed um, what changes may be made. You, you nailed the, the KVY switch and Donassian going out wide, um, and Wolfenden keeping his place in the middle alongside Burgess. Um, what did you make of the rest of the the town team that was put out? Yeah, it was the team the team that I probably probably expected. They they went with the strikers that I probably would have would have gone with myself. I, I you know we talked about potentially. Uh, KVY dipping out and, and Donassian having to go over and, and fill his role there. It's it's probably what I expected them to go with. But I'll, I'll be honest, at, at this point, the Scott Fraser situation is, is perplexing me a mm. little bit. It's a, clearly clearly he's a player with quality. We can see that he's when, when he's on the ball, he looks silky, he looks smooth. 
Um, and, he, and he looks a threat in, in many ways. It was his his like initial shot that led to Matt Penny's goal, but he's just not getting in the game anywhere near enough. Um, this time tucked in from the right size, just not getting in the game enough from over there. He, he's, I think it's going to be quite a poignant one this weekend, actually, with, with MK, we'll get onto this in a minute, but MK mm. Don's coming and for, for him to kind of be playing against the side he did so much damage for as a number 10, for us not to have seen him there yet is a bit, is a bit perplexing. But, but you mm. can't... Maybe this squad is built in a way where there are players that you want to have on the pitch, but there, we know there are too many players to pick for, for the positions, aren't we? So that's that's the one that, that perplexes me still a little bit. Um, but, but Kyle Edwards, wow. Um, he, was, he was excellent. We have ourselves a superstar, don't we, Hutchie, in Kyle Edwards? I mean, we've talked about him, Eduardo. Easy E, trademark Mark Beck again, um, which I like as well because that, that goes with Notorious PIG for Piggott. So we've got two, two rap-themed names there. But um, it, he was spectacular. Stewie, your, your erstwhile colleague and partner in crime, said it was the most impressive half he's seen from an Ipswich Town player for as long as he can remember. And he's in his 10th season now of covering town. Would you, would you agree with that? I, I would I'd go a little bit further and, and nail the the most impressive half since I'd say it's the most impressive half I've seen from an Ipswich player since Muzzy Carriol uh, wow. away at away at Preston in uh, in 2018 when he he left the game uh, he left the game at half time because he had soiled himself um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he was very very good um, everything that he did. Uh, Kyle Edwards, there was no, there's no suggestion of any soiling um, <laughs> yeah. at this at this stage, but he, um, yeah, he's positive, isn't he? Like all the signs we've seen from him so far, he couldn't really have been more more positive. It, you know, obviously there could be goals in there, there could have been direct assists in there potentially, mm. but um, yeah, the uh, yeah the the early signs are are really really good with him. Mm. Um, I'd maybe hold back on superstar just yet. Um, because Muzzy Carriol wasn't a superstar, but he was capable of these <laughs> these halves. But I, you know, this is this is a player that probably shouldn't be playing in League One, and Ipswich yeah. have done very very well to get him. So from this point, it's hard to see that he's not going to be really central to what they what they do this year, and that's um, that's really exciting. Who needs Burst and Selena, eh? If we've got Carl Edwards. <laughs> um, just, I mean, I, I'm not familiar with that story of, of Carriol. He went off because he'd soiled himself. What he was. He was that he was that good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's so good that he uh, he just couldn't play any longer. No, I think I think he was um I think he was ill heading into the game. But um as we know with Mick McCarthy teams, um there isn't an abundance of kind of flair players available. No. And and um and Carriol was he put himself forward to play. He was brilliant for 45 minutes. He scored a really good goal and threatened Preston with every every time he had the ball, just like Edwards did at Cheltenham. Um, but I think his illness caught up with him <laughs> at, at, at the break and there was a suggestion of um, of some Fa- soilage, soilage <laughs> in the dressing room. A suggestion of foul play. Um, yeah. <laughs> no wonder defenders were nowhere near him in that first <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. Maybe that's the key. Maybe that um, is, yeah. Just, just give off a bit of a... <laughs> bit of a vibe. Um, Carriol, Carriol's back in League One. Is he? Um, yeah, he's at he's at Gillingham. Oh wow! Um, so um, yeah, watch out for him. He is he is a prime example of a player who who generally um, is underwhelming, but then can explode, can't he? He can have these unbelievable um, bursts and games and stuff. So yeah, we'll be interesting to see how he does this season. Um, another player we should talk about, Hutchie, who, who also impressed by the sound of it was. Um, the debut-making hairy ass centre back, Callum Burgess. I know you and Stewie were both very impressed with him as well. Yeah, he he. Not only did he 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 kind of delivered himself on on what we expected from him. He he won lots of balls in the air, headed them away. Um, seems to time things really nicely as well. It, sometimes it sometimes it looks as if he's maybe on the verge of getting pulled around by a forward, but but manages to kind of get himself back in the right position. And actually you, you leave that situation thinking he was in control of it all along. Um, mm. There are a few moments like that. Um, so not only that, he also seemed to bring a little something more out of Luke Wolfen than I thought, who looked a bit more calm, a bit more up for it, a bit more composed in what he did. So, you know, that's, that's the mark of a good partnership, isn't it? Bringing, 
bringing better things out of your out of your partner. Saying all of that, two centre halves are going to be disappointed with the two goals that that yeah. were conceded. I wouldn't say that either were directly responsible for either of those goals, but your centre halves aren't going to come away feeling particularly delighted about about two kind of set piece origin goals, are they? But um, mm. again, just just like with Edwards, early signs really good for for Burgess there, and um, yeah, he's he shows every. Yeah, you know, it looks as if he's going to be part of part of things centrally as well. Mm. Would it be fair or would it be too charitable, Hutchie, to suggest that goals like they conceded, where it's kind of causing chaos from set pieces and, and long throws and stuff, that that perhaps maybe is understandable from a team that has barely played together? You've got players kind of meeting each other for the first time and then going out on the pitch to play. That kind of, you need to develop that sort of understanding, don't you, as to who does what, you know, how they're going to react on the pitch, that sort of thing. Is that me being too charitable there, do you think, or...? Um, no, no, I don't think so. I think I think if if any situations on the pitch, um, set pieces are the ones where you have the that re, your job is to find a set at a set piece. This is your job. This is what you do. Um, but saying that, if everybody is, it's the old New England Patriots saying, isn't it? Do your job. If you do, if you do your job individually, then the team is is successful. So I think there's probably an element of that in terms of. Do you do the centre halves know where the goalkeeper's comfortable to go to try and mm. get balls? Do do the centre halves know and trust that the left back can come in off of his flank and make a headed clearance from a corner if it if it's not going to be theirs? There's you know, there are teething pains that's going to be part of it. But I but I also think I also think there's there's a a way of thinking that actually if if players just individually do their jobs then it's then it should be okay. So. I'm on the fence with that, as you can probably tell. I think it's probably a little bit of both, which means um, which means you're you're kind of right, kind of right, kind of wrong. That's the yeah. story of my life, really. But I think um, that's where we're at with this team, though. Yeah. I think I, I think I think it is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's just not all there, um, and that's pro- that's why kind of un- unacceptable, but understandable. It's the same. It's the same thing again. There, isn't it? Like. It is unacceptable that they're conceding silly goals from set pieces, but it's understandable for the reasons that you've said there. So mm. I think that really is kind of a really is a good way of summing up exactly where where Ipswich are at the moment. It's unacceptable, but at at the moment it's understandable. Uh, the understandable bit doesn't last forever, though. Exactly. Uh, how long does that go on for? Um, anyone else impress you on the night, Hutchie? Before we talk about. Um kind of negatives we talked about Burgess and Edwards really they were fantastic anyone else kind of stand out for you um this game's always going to be remembered for his miss yeah um, but I actually thought that Bon aside from that actually and, and he also didn't do his job for for the second goal but in terms of what he really is on the pitch to do the attacking side of things I, I quite liked Bon I liked what he I like what he did I think he was a presence that, that linked up well with Piggott and tested the, the Cheltenham defence. Um, there was part of me that entered this season thinking that actually Macaulay Bond might struggle to really have like a central involvement in this side. Mm. Um, because back in sort of July time, I thought um, I thought James Norwood would be ahead of him in the in the pecking order, and I thought those two might really struggle to kind of oust each other. But Bond for me. Bond Bond's kind of shown me a bit more than that. I, I like I like how he's in control of what he's doing, but still kind of bringing that kind of headless chicken vibe. <laughs> is do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's kind of like Norwood. Norwood does a lot off the cuff, which I really like. Clearly, he's injured at the moment, so not in the conversation. But I, I like how off the cuff he is, and how unstructured he is, and how that can cause problems for defenders. But I think Bond can do a lot of the same things but also be more in control and more kind of systematic with what he does. So actually I, I, I came away feeling quite confident about Macaulay Bond after, mm-hmm. after Tuesday night. Um, but yeah, I, 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 sorry, carry on. I was going to say, where does that, obviously we talked about the miss, where does it rank? Cause a lot of the, a lot of people are seeing on social media saying it's the worst miss they've ever seen for Ipswich town. Obviously there is one big holder of that throne already, that crown, which is the Marlon Harewood miss, the, the, uh, the now classic Marlon Harewood miss. How do you compare the two? And are there any other contenders, Hutchie? 
I'd still put Harewoods as being worse, if I'm yeah. honest. I think Harewood is like uh, both are unacceptable, but but uh, <laughs> but maybe but maybe maybe Bonds is understandable. I can see I can see how Bond missed that ultimately. Marlon Harewood just just didn't kick the ball in the right direction. Um, yeah. and ultimately hit hit <laughs> hit, the, hit the post. So I'm still um I'm still putting I'm still putting Bon. Um sorry, Bon. Um Harewood is number Harewood. one number one in that game for me. The greatest miss of all time is still Ronnie Rosenthal though, isn't it? All those years ago. Do you remember that one? The one um, against the bar when he hit the bar. From yeah. literally the yard. Okay, I think it was Liverpool Aston Villa, wasn't it? That, Impressive <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Um, if you told him to do that, I'm fairly sure he wouldn't have been able to do it. Um Hutchie, talk about kind of things that aren't going so well um and this again maybe um i'll throw it out there see what you think joe piggott uh brought in as the the, the mythical 20 goal a season striker um has yet to score obviously you lost money on him um what have you made of him in in, in the early going so far how, how do you judge him because he he has a huge role to play in this team doesn't he he should have um and i think if he had scored if it's a goal would be really <clears throat> useful for him right now yeah. but um, I, I have to say I'm maybe a little bit, little bit underwhelmed from what we've seen from him so far. We've we've seen flashes of it. We've seen him kind of make his own chances as such, and had a couple of efforts from outside the box that were impressive. Um, he won a really good flick on for that for that bond um, for that bond chance, um, and I like what he can do in the air. He seems mm. again in control of what he's doing there. Kind of if he can have somebody to link with, um, I think he's really useful there. I think he's got a good touch and I like how he can like use his chest and use his body cleverly to, to make space for himself and for others. But in terms of a goal threat, I'm mm. a little bit underwhelmed um, by that so far. How much of that is him and how much of that is the team that he's playing in, not necessarily... Um, playing to him is 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 up for debate but I I would like to see a bit more from a bit more from Joe Pickett. Mm, and I, see, I, I, at this point I would at this point I would also say that I I think you have to at some stage get to the point where he's not kind of na a nailed on starter potentially. Um I don't think they're there yet. I'm sure he'll start at the weekend. I, I really want to see him score goals but mm. he again I don't think it's one that can kind of go on and on as kind of a nailed on every week starter. Mm. Particularly, particularly when there's players like Bon, and then you're talking about maybe getting Fraser to play centrally because Edward Kyle Edwards has come in and changed the game a little bit and become mm. a, a nailed on starter that wasn't there ten days ago. So, um, yeah, there's competition for places, and if you're going to keep your place, you need to do you need to do a bit more. Yeah, that's kind of what I was I was I was hinting at. Um, we've also talked before, and I've seen a lot of fans talking about the gaps in midfield with with um, Harper and Evans sitting quite deep and then there being quite a lot of real estate between them and, and the forwards. is Was that something you saw again on, on Tuesday night? Is that an issue that Town need to address? I'm not sure it's an issue with the midfielders for me. Um, I, I, look, I think <laughs> I think Ev Lee Evans has been a bit off it the last couple. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure that's helped Harper either. But in terms, in terms of that gap, I think that's down to the number 10 situation. I really do. Because... Say say you have Scott Fraser playing in there, mm. that that should help that. He's a player that's designed to kind of be that link between Harper and Evans and the striker. But if obviously if you're playing two strikers, the midfielders are doing what Cook wants them to do, which is they they sit deep to allow the fullbacks to get forward. He calls it they create this little box of two. Uh, I think I hate some of these modern football terms. I really do. So it's a, bo a box of two midfielders and two centre backs, which allow the full backs to get get forward. At mm. which point the wingers tuck in, and that kind of creates your almost like five six man attacking unit, and you've got your four man defensive unit. But I think the missing piece is that is that number ten position. We've seen Chaplin have a go at it. We've seen Bon had a, have a go at it. We've seen Louis Barry have a go at it. And I uh, see so either Bon or Piggott, whichever had a go at it on, on Tuesday night. And, and none of them have really done it in, in terms of what that position is being asked to do. I'm not sure they were necessarily trying to do that at Cheltenham. Mm. But I think that that's the key to making that work. Um, 
is 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 getting that number ten position right, and I think that's that's the one that they're not quite there on at the moment. Yeah. Okay, we'll come on to that in due course when we talk about MK Dons. Um, we'll draw a line under that now, Hutchie. Before we do, can we just um, can you just confirm that my hot take from the season preview show now is definitely correct? They've played three games. They're below halfway in the table. Um, you weren't having it after two. Are you taking it after three? I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give Excellent. you that now. Um, look, technically, yes, you were there. You were there by... Uh, by the end of play on Saturday, weren't you? But um, yeah, yeah, you were hot, too hot no. to trot, <laughs> too, too hot to handle. Um, and obviously, my my hot take included the fact that we must be brave, and things will turn, and we must we must keep faith, and and town will end up coming good. Um, Hutchie, something else which you're struggling to predict at the moment is million pound picks. You're losing money hand over fist, like your name was Gerald Ratner. Look it up, kids. As a good reference for you. Um, you lost another 100 grand <laughs> on Tuesday night. You predicted that town would simply win um, and lost again. So you're now down 400k from the start of the season. Um, you've gone simpler and simpler with each bet to, just to try and win some money back. You find yourself in something of a quandary now, my friend. Mm, sorry, I'm just, I'm just Googling Gerald Ratner. You don't know the Gerald Ratner story. That's interesting. All that stuff about him being the former chief executive officer <laughs> of the major British jewellery company Ratner's Group, now the Signet Group, and all, also achieving notoriety after making a speech in which he jokingly denigrated two of his exactly. company's products. Exactly, but, my friend. That's well, an, there's, a, there's a whole section called the speech. I'll get into a, that. There's an it's an iconic story in British business. So he was he was head of this jewellery empire. Gave a speech where he basically said his products were shite. Um, and as a result, lost loads of money. Who who could have seen that coming? Yeah. Oh dear, that's not great, is it? <laughs> there you go. You've learned something new there today. Gerald yeah, Ratner. I'm going to read up thoroughly on that. <laughs> anyway, right. What have I done? I've lost loads of money. You've lost 400k, mate. Probably not quite as much oh, as that now, but getting there. My wife is going to kill me. <laughs> um. What you, I mean, the big question is how how do you go about starting to win it back? Because I say you, you've gone simpler and simpler and narrower and narrower in the bet. You you've gone from predicting Joe Piggott to score. Um, you started off very bold, which was um, Town to to lead at half time and at full time against Morecambe. That obviously didn't happen. Then you went Piggott to score his first goal at Wimbledon. Uh, um, where was it? Burton. Burton. That didn't happen. We uh, basically did though. <laughs> he, ba he, he basically scored it. They should have won. I feel let down by by Ipswich Town. Um, <laughs> basically, you shouldn't gamble. It's... And then, and then after that, you went even simpler, and it was just simply Town to win at Cheltenham. And again, mm. that didn't happen. So now you're sitting in a in a 400k hole. Uh, what are you going to do? How are you going to start to win it back this weekend? Town against MK Dons. Um, well, I'm not actually covering the game this weekend. I'm at a wedding, which has influenced very much influenced what I'm doing right uh, this weekend. Because one of my big rules is if you're not actually going to be watching it, probably don't put money on it. Okay. Um, but uh, in the spirit of this, I'm going to go for a dub, a little double. Uh, Joe Piggott, anytime yeah. goal scorer again. Yeah. Uh, and I'm probably, you can probably try and negotiate my stake with me on this. I've, and, and I've also gone with both teams to, to score. Right. Uh, I might just put a little 10,000 on it. Just a little 10,000. So, that, so that's a double. Piggott to score anytime and both teams to score. What does that return? 35. So if you put, that, if you put, if you put 10 grand on it, you get 35 back. Yeah, or shall I do fifty? Up to you. So the odds are roughly three, three to one, just over two, three. To yeah, one. about that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's two two point five six to one. I'm going to go fifty, which would give me back one hundred and seventy eight. Okay, so Andy Hutch Warren's million pound pick for this weekend: fifty grand on Joe Piggott to score and both sides to score a double, which will return. What would you say it would return with fifty grand? One seven eight. One seven eight. 178, including stake, and you can start to claw yourself out of this hole you've built. Um, yeah. 
I mean, this is the worst that this isn't, this is what you shouldn't do. I must say at this point, I'm not actually really a gambler, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but in case, that, in case that wasn't clear to anyone. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, what I do know is the worst thing you can do is try and claw it back in any yeah. way whatsoever. <laughs> so, um, but obviously we've kind of, we've kind of started doing this now. So, so that's what I, what I'm going to do. I'm just writing it down on my little list. So I know how much I've, so I don't forget this. Also, an interesting two hundred and forty-one pounds and twenty-five pence on top of that seven hundred and seventy-eight grand as well. So that would be nice. Nice dinner out for you, and Mrs. Mrs. Hutch. Yeah, she doesn't know anything about this, all right. So anyone that's listening to this that knows her, and there are some people, let's just um, let's just keep it quiet, all right. Keep it stum, which is massive gambling losses. Right then, so look wow. out for that this weekend. That's probably the the big storyline going to the weekend. Is can. Andy actually win a bet for the first time. Uh, also, of course, we have to find out if Town can actually win a game for the first time this season, Hutchie. MK Dons are visitors. So much hashtag narrative going into this game. You could float a boat on it. Um, you've got Scott Fraser obviously welcoming his old friends to Portman Road. The pressure to get the first win. And also you've got the entire, it seems like, MK Dons coaching staff, all exits which Town players and coaches. Liam Manning, Chris Hogg, and now David Wright as well. What are your thoughts on this one you said you're not going to be covering it but I, I bet you're kind of wishing you were there weren't you uh yeah to an extent um yeah i'm really i'm really interested to see how liam manning does as um as mk don's manager not just in this game obviously but over the course uh a fairly promising start i think so far they lost to mm. sunderland but beat charlton on on tuesday night and he's a really really highly regarded coach for, for people that don't know his story he was released by ipswich at at kind of 18 in, in 2005 academy player there and had a year playing professionally in Iceland but kind of really began coaching at that point and, and worked his way up coaching primary school kids at like town community events worked his way up through the academy coached there got poached by West Ham ended up coaching there under 23s Declan Rice was in that team he's played a really big role in Declan Rice's career then he got picked up by the the City Football Group, which owned Manchester City and seemingly clubs in, in every uh, in every country of the world, and coached young players in New York for them. Managed a, their Belgian team and, and doubled their win win and goal tallies in a single season. Um, and now here he is at MK Dons. It's an unusual journey, which also mm. included I think he also managed Melton St Audrey's in um, in the SIL briefly. Worked wow. at Co- worked at Coombs Middle School in Suffolk uh, at the same time as as Leo Neal, who's uh, gen- general manager of football operations at, at Ipswich. So he's had a really unusual journey to get there, but he's a coach with with real pedigree. Chris Hogg, we know, highly regarded coach, worked with the town first team a little bit, has been at Newcastle with the under twenty threes. David Wright with Norwich's under twenty threes. They've got some really kind of young up and coming coaches there, which seems to fit what MK Don's want having lost mm. russell martin so i i'm going to be really interested to see to see how he gets on i bet he can't believe that he's going to be managing a team at, at portman road um this weekend in front of what's hopefully another another big crowd mm. um so the game itself actually what do you do selection wise we know there are now nailed on starts as you talked about kyle edwards callum burgess yeah. probably in there joe piggott as well what would you do with the side, it, we've got to see Scott Fraser in the ten spot, haven't we? It, if ever the, this, there was a game for it, it has to be this one, doesn't it? Against his his ex his ex team, yeah. He's going to be he's going to be wanting to to impress in his rightful position. That's an issue we've talked about already that Town need to address. Get Fraser in, surely. You know, I think we want to see that, but I'm not entirely convinced. <clears throat> not entirely convinced we will, um, because. Doing that, you'd move him in, and, and I don't know who you'd necessarily play it. You'd maybe end up putting putting Dobbo in the side um, on on the right. Maybe Louis Barry uh, would play on the right. But I, I'll be honest; I think I can probably see sitting here Thursday morning. I could probably still see Fraser playing on that kind of right sided role with with Bon and, and Piggott again. If I'm mm. completely if I'm completely honest, it's probably not what I would do, but it's. Um, you know, it's, it, I could see it. I, you know, what I'd also wouldn't be against having a look at Bon maybe on the right-sided role um, and letting Fraser play a little bit more centrally. 
Um, mm. But that's something you can mix up during a game. I, I, a lot of this is going to depend on whether players are fit again. Obviously, Wes yeah. Burns and Connor Chaplin have both been out injured. I'll be honest at this point. No, we're not clear of, of, of how severe they are, whether they might be back. I think if they are, that might change that might change things considerably. Um but probably I'd probably go and say at this point that I don't think Fraser will will line up as the number ten. So you've you've got it um the the front four, you've got Piggott, you've got Edwards, you've got Fraser, and you've got Bon, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably. And, and, and then the rest of the team carries on pretty much picking itself, doesn't it? And uh, yeah, I think of this. I think probably still a bit too early for Tom Carroll to be seriously considered. So yeah, I think Evans and Harper will play. Hmm. Um, fullback's going to be interesting. Whether yes, he scored the other night, but I think Hayden Coulson is is one that they would potentially be earmarking as the starter there. Whether he comes from the bench. He's, he didn't come on, obviously, on Tuesday, but I, I I think he might be in consideration for a start now. And, and Vincent Young back at um back at right right back, which I think that might that might mean poor old Janoy, who um hasn't really let Ipswich down. And I think if there had been a straight decision of, of who should start at centre back on Tuesday night, uh, had Vincent Young carried on playing, I think he probably would have got the nod ahead of Wolfenden. But as it's happened, mm. Wolfenden had a good game at Cheltenham next to Burgess and I, I don't really see that Cook needs to split that up now mm. it's got the beginnings of something of a partnership doesn't sound like Edmondson's quite going to be there for for this weekend I'm led to believe that maybe the Wimbledon game might be the first time he's really really in consideration so I think poor old Janoy despite not doing an awful lot wrong might find himself dropping out of this side again we are definitely though in another period of denascence aren't we I mean I know is it just ongoing weekend. Is well, it just always ongoing? I think it's just a very I, long. I guess he's always there. I guess technically, I mean, obviously he wasn't. He wasn't here towards the end of last season. Um, he went away, but now he's back again, and he's playing again. Um, yeah, he fantastic. The nascent period. Can we extrapolate a prediction from you, Hutchie? You've already said you think both teams are going to score. Um, what do you think mm. is going to happen? Our town going to finally get their first win this weekend? Because we, let's be honest, we bloody need it. We need a win. Just to settle everything down, start the ball rolling. What are you saying? Whenever we get round to these predictions, I always f- get this sudden kind of throng of positivity. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like, really, really, I want to predict 1-1. One, one. Um, but I'm not going to. I'm going to say 2-1 to Ipswich because I don't know why. I just get this sudden feeling of positive kind of vibe just coming over me at predictions time. So I am going to say... I'm going to cover my tracks. I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say two one to Ipswich. Two one Ipswich. I also was thinking one one, but like you, I've been imbued with a sense of positivity just from your smile. And I'm going to say three one Town. Yeah, baby, let's win this in style and get the season really rolling. Carl Edwards hat trick. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> no, that's not that's not a serious prediction. But I, I mean, I can... let me just look that up quickly because if if I were to change the the, the million pound picks to a Carl Edwards hat trick, yeah, I imagine, I imagine that. I'd imagine, imagine you'd win quite a lot. Some long odds on that. Uh, I think don't you get would. Me, don't get me wrong, that wasn't a serious prediction, but uh, obviously going off the back of his, his Superman-esque performance on Tuesday, I want to see him I want to see him get a goal or at least have a hand in, in all three of those goals that Town are going to score because I've said it. What would you get? Uh, odds aren't available for that uh, at the moment. Well, anyway, that's something for food for thought maybe, Hutchie, going forward. Um, oh, you're... Oh, 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 I'm wrong. There's a separate little market for it. Let's keep going. They've not actually, they've not got him on the list. Luke Wolfenden hat trick, 500 to one. <laughs> no, that would be. I mean, I mean, I think I'd probably have to close down the book at that point. <laughs> He's not actually on this list. Scandalous. Scandalous. Mm. Um, Tom Carroll is. He's 500 to one. Don't think that's going to happen. No, Janoy Donassian. Oh, Kyle, Kyle Edwards is 500 to 1. He's right at the bottom. 500, 500 to, to 1. one. I mean, shall I put a little pound on that? What? Of the, of the, of, can I have a bonus? Um, it, mate, you've got as much money. You've, got, you've still got 600k left, so you can do whatever you want with that. You can divvy it up however you see fit. I'll put a pound on it. A pound on a <laughs> Kyle Edwards hat trick. <laughs> why not? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> why not? Why not? Superb. There we go. So uh, Hutchie's blowing money all over the shop. Um, 
there we go. We'll see what happens this weekend. Hutchie, is there anything else to discuss? You're off to a wedding this weekend. Where is said wedding? Are you what part of the country are you in? Are you going to be checking oh, your phone? Uh, I won't be checking my phone because I don't think the reception would allow me to for uh, among other reasons. Um I'm not very far. I'll probably be able to hear Portman Road from where I am. Oh, okay. So, um, I'm at Wolverston. Oh, nice. So if so if it's really loud, uh, when that hat trick goal goes in of Carl <laughs> Edwards, I'll know. Um, look, if Grant Ward can score a hat trick in the second half, I see no reason whatsoever why you can't be bang on with with a Kyle Edwards hat trick. So, um, yeah. We'll Fingers see. crossed. We shall see. Um, Hutchie won't be there this weekend, but the big porker and Siri Watson and Roscoe will be, of course. So follow all with us and also look out for the game David videos that Rossi's putting together. As I say, that double act of Mark and Mike and all the usual gang, Bono, View from the U2, etc. Um, those game day videos are always worth a watch. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more exclusive video content. That's KOA on YouTube, Kings of Anger on YouTube. Plus, follow us across all the social medias, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes as well because it helps us with our visibility in the iTunes chart. And also support our sponsors, manscaped.com. Use the code KOA at manscaped.com to get 20%, 20% off all their excellent clobber from ball shavers to nose trimmers to ear trimmers to cologne to boxer shorts to whatever. Whatever you need, you can get it at KOA. Uh, use the code KOA, manscaped.com, get 20% off and free delivery. Hutchie, I hope you have a fantastic weekend at the wedding. I hope your bets come off this weekend. I, I guess you'd, you'd actually rather um, your your big bet come off, wouldn't you, rather than Carl Edwards get a hat-trick? You'd rather pick it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think a pound is, is actually a bit of a waste of time in this grand scheme of this. But uh, now we've talked about it, I feel like it should at least be at least be covered so okay well let's see let's let's hope for that let's hope town do get a victory and we can really start this um this blue train rolling have a great weekend everyone uh, and look out for the pod next week <laughs>